no longer contending with your flesh or the flesh of others. Think about it. Scripture clearly says to wait to your spirit for righteousness. When you wait to the spirit and the mind of that spirit, which is called the mind of Christ, which I go into great detail in all these other videos, what that means, it's another whole mind. It's not the self or religious mind, independent from God, trying to contend with its flesh or the flesh of others. It really means you wait without any interfering thoughts and you would say to start the day off, Father, what would you want to say or do to this vessel? A vessel only. I don't want to give out my opinions and ideas. I want you to say to this vessel what it is that you want to say or do. And when this happens... How can you boast in that? You can't boast in it. It wasn't something you decided to do or something you, you decided to say. You waited. Father gives you something to say. You say it. Or you do it. Now if someone comes along and attacks you, in truth, who are they judging? If this really happened. And you know you didn't initiate this. You would have said that. Well, you wouldn't have done that. Father says, say this or do that, and you do. Can they put you on trial? Judge what you just said? Paul said it. I won't let you put me on trial, nor do I put myself on trial. As far as my conscience is concerned, I know where I got this from. I'm simply a vessel to which the Father is speaking and I'm telling you what he said. Or I'm doing what he said to do. So you're not judging me. You're judging him. It's that part of you're not even aware of. You think it's my opinion. Do I have my opinions at time? Yes. Even Paul had his opinions at time. First Corinthians 7 does that. When he came to be married or not get married, he said, as far as my opinion is, it's better that you didn't get married because it's a distraction. If you want to know him, the power of his resurrection, if you want to come to know yourself and the Lord to greater depths, being married can be a distraction. If you don't get the right mate, help me. Two spirits coming together, expressing one flesh, one mind, one Lord, one faith, and both of these people, male or female, expressing the will of the Father. There's no contention. You would be of one mind, one spirit. You would be in agreement to one another. You would have a unity of the, of the spirit that passes any self-created so-called unity of the flesh. Well, I would only marry a Baptist girl. Well, I would only marry a Pentecostal girl, woman, or vice versa, woman marrying a Pentecostal man. Well, I would only marry into a Catholic. That's not unity. That's a denominational idea of unity. In a division, it's not expressing the one mind of Christ. So what I'm sharing right now sounds like a bunch of confusion. <laughs> really, it's not. It was for the longest time with myself. Contending against my spirit that was constantly being prompted by the Holy Spirit. His spirit bears with my spirit that I'm a son of God. And being the son of God that I am in my spirit trying to get this carnal mind, educated mind, independent from God, to surrender its opinions and ideas. You see, actually think you know, Lord, as you begin to learn, it took a long while for me to dump a lot that I thought. 
Now, a lot of the bad things, I was easy to dump that. You knew it was wrong. But the so-called good things, apart from him, there is no good. It has to come to him. And it's him speaking through you as a vessel only and fulfills what Paul said to the church of Corinth. What do you have that you haven't received it through your spirit waiting for the Father? What do you want to say and do to this vessel today? He gives you something. He says you to do something. So you either plant something or you water something. But he who plants you who waters is nothing. It's God who gives the increase. So what do you have you haven't received? If you haven't received it, how can you boast in glory though you ain't received it? It was your opinion, your idea, your good work, your words. That causes contentions and strife. And Paul, for the longest time, tried to contend with this. With his own flesh and against the flesh of others. In the latter part of his life, he come to a final conclusion. Whether I envy, strife, whether I have contention, by contention, each one trying to promote themselves. He said, Christ is preached. No matter, Christ is being preached. Don't judge anything for the time. Each one of us, because of these acts done independent from God, saying things or doing things, thinking you're pleasing God by doing that, when you haven't pleased God, if you, you're supposed to wait through your spirit. And the Father would say and do through you. Like Jesus in the mood of a son of man, the son of God in the mood of a son of man demonstrated that. And could claim what he was saying wasn't his thoughts or his works, but they were the thoughts and works of his Father. And he would say, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. They're not from the flesh that bring death. It's not going to give you the answer. You end up in contention with others, contending. He did that for a long time. He used to contend. He learned to be by things he suffered. He would contend with them. At some point, he just wiped the sand off his shoes and moved on. Didn't answer them no more. Didn't contend with them. They were stuck in their self-righteous religious religion. And he couldn't get them saying that they, thinking that they were near, and that all these other Gentile dogs were afar. What he was coming to offer was for those near, those afar off. All we like sheep are going astray. Here comes the Lamb of God. Offering a way back to our Father and to our Sonship and dropping this self-image we developed in our flesh of our particular race, its cultures, its secular and religious creeds and opinions of either male or female or some other gender. Totally independent from God. God knows who you are. You should have been manifested as a son of God, not some fallen son or daughter of man with some rogue soul depending upon accumulated knowledge which brings out this definition of the tree of the wisdom of knowledge of good and evil. Get past a tree or an apple. You're going independent from God depending upon accumulated knowledge coming up out of your so-called forefathers when it should have come from your father. Secular forefathers were religious forefathers. These tutors, leaders, leaders and guides were to lead and guide you to the father, not them. That's the sad thing. They're tutoring you, guiding you to their particular slant of view and denominational view. It's called the doctrines of men. You're not being taught of your father. They should have led you to your father. And once that happened, let him go. The father will teach him, teach him well. Now he may use you from time to time or others.
if we could discover what's called the mind of Christ and get past some crazy idea of that, that's a human mind contending against a mind that's eternal, inborn, hear that? The intrinsic mind of the spirit, the word intrinsic means inborn, it's inborn. it was born in that spirit. It was eternally born, we can't comprehend that with our carnal idea of birth. It's getting past that. The mind of the human spirit is eternal. It's intrinsic. It's inborn. It was placed there. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to work out what's in the intrinsic mind, it would override what you have in your accumulated knowledge, in your fallen rogue soul, going to independent from God, and being shaped by the iniquity, human efforts of your parents of some particular race, culture, secular religious creed, or gender. In me, that is in my flesh, is nothing good, as I just described it, being raised and shaped in the iniquity of a parent that didn't know, who didn't know, who didn't know, clean on back to Adam, acting independent from God. God took care of that. He who knew no sin, knew no sin, became sin, that you might become the righteousness of God. Well, what made me unrighteous to begin with? You were born in a natural body, manifesting it as a son of man or the daughter of man, and not the son and daughter of God that you were to be and to express. Now, I've got a whole series of videos which intertwine with the other videos called The Living Word that brings this out. It developed it over time. I would wait through my spirit and ask, ask the Father questions, and I would wait. And throughout the course of a day, week, months, sometimes years, he would answer these questions. And the reason why I had to wait and why it took so long because he had to undo what has been done to me. All this accumulated knowledge I picked up over the course of my life, shaped my parents in an education system, many times very ungodly, had nothing to do with God, beyond just the fact of, you know, arithmetic, English, and basic skills to help you to better read, write, and stuff like that. That's just basic stuff. We're getting into deeper matters. Who am I? Where was I supposed to be? Where am I going? What's this life all about? The greater, deeper questions of life that many a philosophy can't answer, but opinions of men can't answer, if you're not getting it from the father of your spirit, he's, he's the father of your spirit. Read Hebrews 12, shows you that. You have fathers of the flesh that you should reverence. You let them shape you into what you are. What's considered something good or bad, they shaped you. You fit right in. But once you discover you have another mind, I said this Nicholas parent would go to three and four generations until someone finally wakes up and begins to question things, then ask. Then God, through their spirit, begins to respond. God sways the judgment of the willing, expecting heart. Those expect to be led, will be led. Those that wait, renew this mind, this old mind, after the inward man, the new mind, new to us, not doing it. it wasn't there before. It was always there. It's the eternal. It's the eternal mind. Intrinsic mind. Inborn. Eternally inborn in your human spirit. This natural mind was born into this world, cut off from God. It was shaped in iniquity, as, as 
Psalm 51 same. David comes to realize that. That's why I say David was a man after God's own heart. Not his his heart. He saw what his heart could do. He learned to wait. And God would give him things to the mind of Christ in him, which was a mystery to them at that time. This matter of the mystery, I got a whole series of videos on the mystery. What it was. It comes to this final conclusion. What was the true great was the mystery of God, as it says. What was this mystery that was so great? You were supposed to be manifested as a son of God, but you ended up being manifested as a son of man, cut off from God. God has forgiven you for that. It was an injustice done to you, unaware. When you see the injustice, he corrected it to his justificational work before the world began. In Hebrews chapter 12 was saying that. Looking into Jesus, the author and fisher of our faith, who for the joy that was present with him endured the cross, despised the shame, now sits down at the right hand of the Father. For consider him as you grow weary and faint in your carnal mind, trying to figure all this stuff out. What he often finished was pre noon before the world began. Manifest in time. You can see how this intertwines with my whole series on the eternality of the human spirit. Trying to contend with those that don't believe that. They believe that the human spirit was created. Though this body was created and this planet, material world was created, but your spirit was eternal and that's the only reason that when this spirit was breathed into a material body made up of the elements of this earth, he gave it a living soul. Living because it was in contact with the human spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit that gave you communication with your father. Cut that off, which Adam did, by believing the lie that you didn't need this. You didn't need God. You could become God. God-like. Knowing good and evil. You can go with accumulated knowledge. You don't have to wait on God. You don't have a spirit. You don't have this intrinsic mind. That's his mind being you which was in Christ. Jesus, while he was in the mood of a son of man, he didn't live out of that eternal mind which he possessed before he came, while he came, after he leaves. That mind was always there. But as a son of man, he had to do exactly what we got to do, wait to his spirit. And when he did, and never have acted independent of the Father, all this comes out in this year, the first begotten. See, but most people can't take the time to listen to all these videos. And I'm saying, well, I understand that. So if you can't do that, at least acknowledge the fact or come to understand that you got a human spirit apart from this fallen rogue, rogue soul that will share all this. I mean, it's the same mind as the means in you, Jew and Gentile, not just the religious people, but the Jew and the secular world has it. The secular world has their contentions and the religious world would contend with you. I don't contend with you no more. You want to go with your self-willed religious mind or secular mind and don't want to discover the mind of your spirit which is eternal and that God's your father attempting to restore you back to your sonship weaning you from being a son of man coming to know your father coming to know yourself and no longer seeing people after the flesh. Or Jesus, the Son of God, manifest as the Son of Man, you should see him as the Son of God. And you see those in the flesh, you don't see them after the flesh more. You begin to understand they all have a spirit that has the same mind and 
The task is to the Father to have him through you get them to see that. And once they see that and understand that, then they'll listen to their Father. I have certain individuals I've been ministering for 20, 30 years. At some point, I said to them, they would ask questions. I said, ask your father. By reason of time, you should be able to do that. Ask your father. So let me close this. I don't expect them to go off and listen to my videos. It would help you because I believe a lot in these videos. I'd ask the father questions. He'd say, give me an answer. I would put on scratch notes, then type it up. He'd give me sometimes a short little sentence or paragraph. And many times these short little sentences and paragraphs turned into pages. Because as I'm typing up what he said to him, I'm saying, could you explain that further? He explains it further. Could you explain that further? He explains it further. There's a length and breadth and height and depth of the love of God that transcends any human experience of this thing of love. Let alone who I am, why am I here, where am I going, what's it going to be like, what went wrong. Wrestling with this flesh against my spirit, my intrinsic mind. Inborn mind, and not this mind that we were birthed into and shaped by the iniquity of our parents in this world, the flesh and the devil. He wants to wean us. I've got a whole series of videos on that, the weaning. Listen to that. Or better yet, ask your father. Then wait. Be willing. Because you won't have no willpower to do that. You'll as soon as you say that, I want to know this, the more you go off and be distracted by a thousand different things. Well, I said, look, Father, I'm willing, but I lack the power to back up this desire, this will to want to know you. I get all these distractions in my flesh that contends with me. I'm not going to contend with more. You structure my circumstances. You wean me. You bring me. Make me to know. And he will, but he has to get your permission, your free will. The devil will never ask your permission. He thought he had accomplished something by letting you be born to the loins of Adam, then automatically you're, you're doomed to hell because you're born to the loins of Adam. You gained the sin nature of Adam. But it, the mystery, what he didn't know, that the Father, through the Son, powered by the Holy Spirit, took care of that. The Lamb of God who took away the sin nature of Adam. The Lamb of God who offered his life was slew before the foundation of the world for knowing that, covered it. So the S-I-N problem is the problem. Don't focus on the S-I-N-S, the byproducts of that sin nature. And it could be things good, it could be things bad. You do, you're helping and you need to help trying to rack up brownie points or something to gain God's favor. You already got his favor to what the finished work of Christ accomplished before the world began. You are a son of God. You are a son of God. But it's hidden over with a mass of some particular race, culture, secular, religious, creed, or gender. Remove the mask. The devil won't let you do that. Jesus come to manifest that. He said then, Matthew 5, at the Beatitudes, Mount of Olives, speaking to the people, a mixed multitude of Jew and Gentile. And they asked him, how should we pray? So let me close on that prayer. He said, pray in this manner. Our Father. Our Father? The Jews didn't think about it that moment. But if they did, they would say, well, these Gentile dogs can't call God their Father. Only we who have our father Abraham as our father. They don't. They missed the whole point. And Jesus said to them, if Abraham was your father, who knew me and saw my day, 
you would have known me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and that I express as a son of man are expressing the mind and will of God the Father. My Father, your Father, your God and my God, a son of man, Jesus, the Son of God manifest in flesh. So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Above all other names, call no man your father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was what God's original intent was to manifest the Son of God and sons of God in a created material earth and express the kingdom of God on earth, calling it the kingdom of heaven. That's what he wanted. It didn't occur. What happened was a lie. You don't need God to create your own world. Your YouTube and dream world. Cut off from God. Yeah, look at our world today. It's far from a utopia. It's far from expressing the kingdom of God on earth. It's the kingdom of hell. Satan. Tongues lit of hell. Setting the course of nature. Manifesting anything but God and his kingdom. That day is coming. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Not stale traditions handed down by forefathers. Daily. So the outward man is perishing. You're letting it go more and more every day. Undoing what has been done to you. Cut off from God. Shaping the of your parents. Letting that go. So the out man is the king, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, being made fit for the existence God had originally intended us to be in. Eternal beings coming into a material created world, manifesting an eternal kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So give us this day, Father, our daily bread, and forgive us what you have of our trespasses, of being unfaithful at times. Thank God that you were faithful to your son. You accomplished what we couldn't accomplish, what Adam didn't accomplish. His son came, the second Adam. The first Adam failed, the second Adam accomplished it. He completed the expression of who we were, sons of God. And one day that's coming, but the earth will no longer moan and groan waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God, because they will be here, expressing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, and we will live in a world without end. God bless you all. Good night.